Well, good morning, folks. Uh, I see a big heavy rain right here, and it's coming this way right now. That's what's going on here in the Tennessee Valley. Uh, I'm, this is going to be a brief, real brief introduction, but today I'm on Lake Gunnersville, and we're going to fish with spinner baits. Okay, I'm going to start off this morning with a sharp truce and white spinner bait. Gold blades are my favorite under conditions like this, folks. When it's overcast and raining, I catch a lot more fish um, with gold bladed spinner baits. Now I have a silver one right behind it. This is called a double leaf spinner bait. And uh, I have a trailer hook, if you notice, on the back of it. Sometimes I use a trailer, sometimes I don't. But if you can use a trailer, you're better off on a spinner bait or a buzz bait to use a trailer hook at all times if you can. But a lot of this grass on Gunnersville is so thick, and if that's where the fish are going to be held up, I'll change to a different spinner bait without a trailer hook so I can chance catching the fish because a trailer hook oftentimes will catch grass and, and hinder you from catching fish so it's a sort of a bad situation but a trailer hook is the best way to go if you can we're going to make us one up we're going to put a three alt mustad hook on it trailer hook and the way i do it is i just slip the hook on and right here is a piece of 12-2 insulator. That's the same wire that your house is wired out of. And I just, what I do is just take it off of the wire and cut them into quarter inch pieces. Now we're gonna take it and slip it right over that hook like that. Okay, that won't come off. What that'll do is it'll keep this trailer hook uh, in line with, in other words, if you let this spinner bait fall, that trailer hook will be directly in line with this other hook. It works a lot better if it's free like this instead of with a rubber, you know, that you, I forgot how those worked. I, I've not used them in years. This is the best way to keep that trailer hook uh, on that. This is 14 pound test red cage in line which is a little bit light. Normally, I just go ahead and run 17 to 20 pound test line on my spinner baits, but that's what I have it tied on this morning. It'll work, it'll catch them. This is a seven foot cadence rod, uh, medium action with a cadence reel. And let's make a cast on this point, a few casts right here, and then we'll move on into the main lake. But a spinner bait, I like to keep it in vision days like today bass is notorious for jumping up shallow when it's overcast and uh, we might catch us fish here on this point you never know but i generally keep that bait in vision close to the top of the surface and right now i'm just using a straight retrieve just throwing it reeling it back just see if i can get a strike but normally I want to work a, a spinner bait erratically. Stop it, let it sink a little bit, jerk it, let it sink a little bit, jerk it. That's what reflexes a lot of strikes. But on days like today, you can cover a lot of water with a straight retrieve, especially going uh, working the bait over the top of grass or the blade is actually bumping grass right now. And that alone is giving that bait an erratic, erratic action, excuse me. There we go. First fish of the day. Not much of one, but he was up shallow. Like I figured they should be. That's a little bitty bass. That fish right there is about 11 inches long. But here's a prime example of a spinnerbait bite anyway. It don't matter. I had two two bites on that point right there folks they were short well this fish hit short but he hit good enough to where well see the spinner prime example if it hadn't been for that trailer hook i wouldn't have caught that little fish but he's about 11 inches long but let's let him go now he was in about two feet of water up there 
And what I'm looking for on this flat right here is bait fish. And I do see a few up there. I thought I'd see more. Uh, bait fish meaning shad. I see a few flipping, but not many right now. There went one right there. By the way, this is a War Eagle spinner bait. This is a 3 8 ounce War Eagle. I like a War Eagle, a Strike King, and believe it or not, I like them little booyahs. Them are good little blades. They have real good com components on them. It's a little better fish right here, folks. I snuck up on this one. Really, that's a good fish. Let's get right here. Ah, excuse me. <laughs> Let's get a net on this one. Woo, he ate that spinner blade up like he was supposed to. Oh, he come off. Y'all seen him though, folks. <laughs> Go, folks Let's see what we got here this is a good fish right here good fish but I don't know if it's a bass or not if it is it's a big fish that's something else that's not a bass that's got to be a big drum or something like that but he hit a chatterbait. <laughs> I can't get it out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a big drum. He eat that chatterbait. Look here, what a big drum. Golly, oh, that fish hit that. What about that? When that fish first hit, he's barely hooked, so I'm going to net him so we can take a look at him. He's not our target species, but that's what you can expect fishing with a chatterbait. I've caught all kinds of stuff. I caught a flathead one time. Talking about flathead catfish with a chatterbait one time. Look at there, what a drum. My goodness, it felt like a big redfish is what he felt like. But when he first hit that bait, I said, uh-huh. Uh-huh, we got us a Lake Guntersville special, but it's a big drum special. Doggone it. I'm after a big fish today. Look at there, what a drum. I thought I had about eight or nine pound large jaw. That's what I thought I had, but let's let him go. Man, oh man, you give me a thrill, old boy. There for a little bit, but you didn't fool me. I knew you wasn't a bass. Spinner bait bite and a good one. Let's get him out of there. Unless he's just mean, folks. It started raining. Nah, he's a good one. Started raining, so I switched back to a spinner bait. He's not near as big as that other fish, but he's a good one. I kind of redeemed myself a little bit. Let's net this fish. Quit, 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 quit. Now we gotta show show you off a little bit. That's a good bite right there on a day like today. That's a big fish. He ain't quite as big, but he's a good one. Five of them is what you want. We could have done had two already. Good Guntersville bass right there. Here. Yeah. And um this fish come out about four, about four feet of water is what I'm in now, but a little thicker millful. So I changed up just a little bit, tweaked out, looking for a pattern. Okay, but I don't know if I'm gonna find one or not. These fish are real scattered. It's the way it is in the fall, but there's a good one, folks. Let's let him go. Go on back, boy. Huh. Tuckered him out, didn't I? Spinner Blade Strike King KVD. Now, 3 8 ounce. 
with a zoom split tail trailer. Okay, let's quit all that. Let's, it's not really the bait as much as it is is creating that reflexive action type strike, covering that water. That's all it is. It's work ethnic. These reflex action type baits like this, spinner bait, buzz bait, chatter bait, oh my goodness, um, lipless crank baits, crank baits, they're all designed to cover a lot of water. Nothing finesseful about this at all. Throw and wind and figure out the speed of the retrieve that you need. Depth of water. All this comes into play. You gotta think all the time. Especially these big lakes like this because remember only 10% of any lake holds the fish. The rest of it is just barren desert. That. I picked up this spinner bait and made the first the first cast I made with it I caught one. Come here boy. Come on here. Different blade right here. My goodness. Pretty good one. They're starting to chew right now. Found me a little area right here that's wind protected, folks, and there's a lot of shad in it. Pretty good one, ain't it? Oh, I'm hooked up to my watch. But I did. I laid that strike king, king down and grabbed this other spinner bait, and boom, as soon as it hit the water, that fish was on it. Just let him go right here. I mean, he eat. Come on, that boy. Okay. There we go. Y'all won't believe this. I have caught everything. You name it, and I have caught it today. And I like catching them, but now that's not my target species. I want y'all to look what a channel cat. <laughs> oh, it's a good one, too. For the Tennessee River, it's a good one. The Tennessee River is not known for big channel cat. This is a big channel cat. I guarantee you. And he nailed that spinner bait. Golly, look here, folks. And this is a good one. I want y'all to go fishing when you can because it's good for you. Look what a look at there. That is a big channel cat. For here. My goodness. And he nailed that spinner bait too. I'm out here on the main lake now, hitting some areas. Come on in here. Look here. I've changed to my pattern up a little bit for a reason. I was looking for better fish. All right, folks. That is a big, healthy channel cat. Let's let him go. That's the biggest one I've ever caught in the Tennessee River. He's a good one. Go on back. we go I don't believe this I want you I want y'all look at this my goodness the channel cat is up here that fish hit right by the boat y'all seen that and he lassoed himself and that is a big channel cat another big one for the Tennessee River it is but that fish is in two feet of water Dang, he's a stubborn son of a gun. Look at him right there. 
and he hit that like a bass would. I mean, he knocked the fire out of it. This is a little bit unusual. I've caught channel chat and um, uh, flathead on spinner baits and also on chatter baits, but not this many like this. There's a big movement. A channel cat and two feet of water on Gunnersville Lake, folks. Look what a channel cat. And he has made a mess. I want you to look how he eat. I want y'all to look how he eat that. He's got hooks in him everywhere. Where's my pars? Look at there. What a channel cat. He's gonna break my rods and everything. Them are the stoutest doggone things. Let's let him go. I hope you didn't break my rod, but if you did, that was my fault. Let's let him go. Well, folks, that's the way it happened today. It was a uh, pretty good fishing um, for the first front of fall. And I want to thank y'all very much for everything y'all have done, all the great comments. Same thing every time, because that's the best way I know how to say it at this time. And thank y'all very much. Hey. <laughs> Whoa! I remember gold fishing when you can because it's good for you.